Okay, hopefully everybody can see in here today. I'm going to start the teardown process. So, uh, I, I'm hoping you can see what's going on here, but what I will be doing is, um, first off, I'm gonna kinda take off all the front stuff and start pulling everything out of here and getting it prepped to start putting things in. So, first video may not be super exciting, but you know, you guys get to come along for the ride. So, here I go. I turn this fan on, so I'll kind of mute the volume a little bit unless I'm talking and reduce that annoyance, but I gotta have it to kind of keep the nasty smoke out of my uh, lungs, so. Here comes the whirl. Yeah, that was barely tacked on, look at that. I've got the main board done. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull that out now. So there you have it. That's pretty much all there is to a fender fiber board for something like these guys. Here's a, your preamp section. Here's the uh, phase inverter. And then all of the power stuff is pretty much on the tubes there. So we might take a close up of that at the end. But, uh, and these boards, the, the kind of the gist of all they are is they have a, a backing board here that's designed to protect from grounding to the chassis. And then this board goes on top of it, so all of these solder connections that are protected. Fenders use this design for a very long time. I tend to prefer this thicker, hard board uh, to, and, and raising it up on risers just a little bit above the surface, but that's that. So I'll take a little time later and pull off all those components, but that's out. And now we're gonna get the, um, one of the things I'll be doing as well is peeling off all of the extra wires that are not the heater wires. I'm gonna leave the heater wires alone. Um, but I'm kind of just stripping out the main boards, so I'll finish doing that right now. I've got to get, uh, you know, more of this going. But... <laughs> Leaving the heater wires in will make it a little bit easier for me to rebuild it. I don't have to redo the heater wires. transformer so one of the first things I'm gonna do there is take a picture of what wires go where these two reds are here orange goes down to a ground point red goes down to a ground point blue and red is bias so okay okay so I'm gonna take a quick photo of this transformer hookup so I can see what the wires go orange I think is gonna be the um, there's a wrap that'll go around it uh, to kind of a Faraday cage I guess they call it to kind of block noise then I've got a um, another red line which is the center tap of this main transformer I think coming to ground and then these two are the parts so I'm going to take a picture of that just so I have it and then I'm also going to quickly test the ohms readings through the transformer taps to see I think if I take my ohms measurement here I should get you know something 100 ohms 200 ohms whatever between each half and then the total will be 400 so if I go from here to here I get 21 ohms, and if I go to the center tap of that one, maybe, I get 11.1 on that one. Uh, 
11.2 on the other, so roughly about 11 ohms. So that means I know if I'm reading 22 ohms between two red ones that I've got the outer, you know, the two outer ends, but if I'm reading 11, one of those is the um, um, center tap. So you just have to basically make sure if you're reading 22, those are your two ends and the other one will be your center tap. So I will go ahead and desolder those now. Always keep an eye on that though so that you don't lose track. And these fenders, it's red for a center tap as well as red for the two end ones. I've seen somewhere they give it a slightly different color for the center tap than your outer ends of the winding so that it's obvious which is the different color. But in this case, they're all three red. So you just have to make a measurement so that you know how to make sure you set it back the right way. So, and I'll tell you right now, I, um, the bias point there, the ground was not, it looked really ugly. I don't think they've gotten, some of these solder blobs didn't look like they did a very good job when they were, they did some replacement, they were they swapped these guys out. These will likely be good and I can reuse them elsewhere. Um, but yeah, they, they didn't do an outstanding job on that one. Uh, all right, so. So then at this point, um, I think I have most of it out. So what I kind of wanted to do, I think I mentioned to you guys um, on another video where I was doing some of the other work for this, but we'll see. This will go effectively in somewhere about here with a couple of standoffs. Uh, and that's probably not the right order, but then I will have the FET board. It does look like it fits right here, hopefully, with a couple standoffs. So I'll have to kind of slide this this way to get it fit that. But then these other two boards, I will want to put something kind of like this. Uh, and then I have to fit in here as well, though, my... Um, um, main power filtering board. One of these boards is the going to be the replacement effectively for this guy. The other one will be the filtering that goes down to the FET board and the 12 volt supply. But we'll get to that when we get there. Um, I'm going to also take out all of the, there are some capacitors on the top that are coming through some of these and I won't need those anymore so I'm going to want to take those off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. One of the things that Fender does that's interesting with these, if you if you can see, they actually wind these power lines that are coming in with a wire that's soldered at both ends to ground so that it rejects any noise that is trying to maybe come out of that main power in back to ground so that it can't get caught up in it, if you will. We have got the bulk of all of this stuff torn out, and that is all she wrote. So the next thing I want to do quickly is turn this over and get up underneath it and get the rest of these guys. Oh, and the other thing I didn't do was pull out all my tubes, which I don't really need them in here anymore. Oops. Transformers are beasts. All right, so kind of drop that down. Luckily, there's nothing really in there, but all right. So now I'm going to get this guy off. 
This is up in what they used to call the dog house. Fender, I don't know if you can see this very well because the transformers are in the way, but this is where all of the um, filter capacitors would go for the main power filtering. Um, and then they would run the wires all the way down through holes in the chassis all the way up to this end. And in the Dumble design, he keeps them inside but closer to the power section so that there is less chance of noise transference. And there you have that. So these will be good for me to reuse at some point in the future uh, because these look like they're brand new, nice quality um, boards. So, I mean, uh, capacitors by uh, these are F and T caps, which are really great capacitors. So I'll be able to reuse those in a future build as well. So we'll, we'll get a close up of all of what's come out in a minute here. Uh, and then we will, uh, I'm gonna just pull this guy through. I think otherwise. So this is the, the big beefy power transformer. This is the beefy out output transformer to be able to push all of those guys. And uh, preamp tubes, power tubes, sockets, and there's a choke in here in the power cord. So that is going to be in a nutshell, I think I'll get done tonight. Hopefully this isn't too boring of a video for you guys, but it's seeing what it takes to kind of gut an amp. And you guys can see with me what it looks like now that I've gone and gutted this amp. Oh yeah. So, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but literally this, whatever this hack job was that somebody put in here, uh, they literally tack soldered this. There's, like if I were to put a little heat on that, it's just gonna fall off, let's watch that. And this is why you don't tack solder things. A little bit of time and vibration that is gonna dry out. And then something like, oh look, it's just, it just bubbled up like crazy because it wasn't even well done. And boom, falls off. So that is a bad, bad, bad thing to do. Um, and then, you know, I don't even know what they were doing with this guy, but okay. So there you have it. That's me pulling this guy apart for, for now. And then the next phase is going to be me populating these boards and figuring out where they'll fit inside the chassis. Uh, and so we'll get to that in our next video is me digging it. And I think I'm going to be doing a, a live stream on the weekend if you guys are kind of following with me mostly real time. And that's going to be me doing some more work in the chassis. I'll just be putting in a half an hour to an hour working that. And so hopefully it won't be too boring. I'll be chatting with you as I go and looking for you guys' input and uh, comments. So thanks everybody. Have a good one. We'll talk to you next time. All right. So as I said, I was going to give you a little bit of a close up right here, hopefully. I'm not too close to the mic, but it looks like I'm almost clipping. But there are the boards, a little bit more close up. What we've ripped out. We'll see you next round.